This evening's talk is titled Rural versus Urban, and I was thinking about what that meant, and it's a very good title because actually it really sets up what many might say are some of the problems in developmental work and humanitarian aid, which is the disconnect between rural and urban areas. We perceive them as differently. We talk about working in the field when actually we might be working in an informal settlement or a slum or in Port-au-Prince. And working in a field is very different to working in a dense urban neighbourhood. And yet we have a mindset which is very often rural because our own tools, our approaches, our comprehensions, our understandings are rurally derived. And that's not actually a bad thing, but actually if you're in an urban context, that's very different. So we talk about notions of community. We have an assumption maybe in our minds that community is a homogeneous group of people, as they are in villages with hundreds of generations all over the world. That might be the case in urban, but more often than not, actually you get people coming and going. You might not need your neighbour. You might not need them, of course. You might not know them as well, but you might need them, of course, after a disaster. So even our assumption of what a community is can be very different. It might be a community of interest. It might be taxi drivers or women working in a factory or something else or, or street kids. They're a community, but that's a very different thought. And it seems to me that's at least one of the issues between rural versus urban, these two different worlds. The reality, of course, as we know, is that they're super connected and they're very much you know, like that and people come and go and people have rural lives and urban lives and we shift and we rely on food and all those things. That's fine. But when it comes to humanitarian aid, Actually, I think at least we need to change our mindset. We need to think urban. We need to think about the opportunities that are in cities of working with the private sector or street vendors or actually working with advertising agencies or actually considering that street kids have an awful lot of skills and assets and abilities that we can connect with and work with. And if you look at what happened after the Haiti earthquake, even by days two or three, markets were re-establishing and street vendors were out. And many clever aid agencies actually worked with street vendors, hiring those to provide food to communities and therefore providing income to those who were already vulnerable in towns and cities. And that seems to me to be urban think, that your assumption is that you can work with existing groups of people and activities, that you can work with commerce, that you can understand competition that you can think about space. Often we think about one of the issues after disaster is where do people live because land is tight and land ownership is really a difficult thing. And if you live in a squat or a slum or on the 10th floor in a tenement with five other families, what does it mean to have an assumption that you're going to build a house afterwards and live in it? I mean, it's meaningless. And so what do we do? How do we think about that? And not a lot of people have any answers, but there might be emerging principles. One certainly is to think about space. I heard from a, a colleague working uh, in Care International in Haiti. She was talking about think about space, not think about land. And that doesn't therefore mean it's easy and we've solved the problem. But we're starting to think about urban ways of, of thinking and approaching and achieving and embracing opportunities of working in urban areas because they are profoundly different to rural. There are some similarities, some things we can do. But on the whole, if you start thinking that working in urban is like rural but stacked together more, that's, that's not okay and that's not right and there are great opportunities about what we can do.